Hi, this is Richard Byrne. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to get started with Google Forms. Specifically, how to use Google Forms to create quizzes to use in your classroom. Now, there's a couple of ways to get started. In Google Drive, you can select from the new menu the option to create a form. And that will open a blank form. Alternatively, you can go to the web address forms.google.com and you'll then have a set of templates from which you can choose. We're going to start with the blank one. Let's call this one a sample quiz. And we'll name our form up there, sample quiz activity. Now, if you're in Google Apps for Education or another Google Apps domain, be it for uh, organizations or businesses, in the upper right corner, if you select Settings, you have the option to restrict access to the form to just people within your domain. You also have the options there to collect email addresses and limit the number of responses. I'm going to turn that off in this particular case. Now let's make this first question student name. We'll make that a single line of text. Again, if you're using this in Google Apps for Education and you selected the option here to restrict and collect email addresses, you don't need to ask that question. And we can put in a question for a student email address. And again, the same thing applies if you have selected restricting and collecting email addresses you don't need to ask that question either. Now let's create our first actual quiz question. We'll use a multiple choice for this first one. We say what is the tallest mountain in the world? Well, you might say Everest K2 or Washington. We'll make that a required question so that students can't skip it. Now let's ask another question. And we can do multiple choice. We could also do a short answer question, paragraph form, drop down menu, a list of check boxes. We can do a scale. Let's do a short answer here. And again, we'll make that a required question. Now let's add one more question here. And in this next question, we can create a question that's based on an image. Now to do that, if I hover over the edge of the question line here, I now have the option to upload an image. I can also pull from Google Drive, pull from my photo albums. I can do a search on the web. Perhaps I'll look for a picture of Mount Everest. and we'll select that image. Now I can resize it by clicking on it and then dragging the corners. And then if I hover over the upper left corner of the image, I have a little menu that appears. And I can say center align. And now I'll ask my question above this. What is the name of this mountain? And again, I'll put my answer choices down here. And I'll make that a required question again. Now you can repeat this process as many times as you like. But since we're making this a quiz, and we want to have this quiz be automatically graded and let students see feedback 
instantly. We're going to go up to this settings menu again and we'll select quizzes. We'll say make this a quiz and we can allow students to see their grades immediately after they submit their final answers or you can select to review those and give them grades at a later time. Now let's set an answer key for each question. So I've selected this question here and the answer key menu now appears. I'll indicate the correct response. And I'll give it a point value. You can also write in feedback. Now this next question here for where is the tallest mountain in the world, we don't have an option here to put in an answer key because it's not a multiple choice or a true false question. Uh, so you're going to have to grade that one manually and give students feedback on it later. And we'll look at how to do that in just a minute. Now let's do the answer key for this question. Again, give it that 10 points and put in the answer. Now let's take a look at this from the student perspective. So we'll select the preview. The student can write in his or her name and put in his email address. And then the student can see his or her score by clicking on view score. Now they won't get any feedback on this short answer question, but they will see feedback on the multiple choice. Now if we wanted to add another question or edit this question, we can do that at any time. Let's take the take one more look at this. So the student comes along and fills this in. And we'll put in some incorrect answers this time. And now we'll see how the student will see that feedback. They'll see the correct answer is indicated for them. And again, the short answer question is ungraded in their view. So now let's look at the teacher side of things here. We've created our simple quiz. If we go to the responses, we have a summary of responses. We can also look at individual responses. So we can see here, this is Mason's, and we could go in and we could uh, put points in. If we were putting this into our grade book, we could put points in for this question. We can scroll through and look at Morrison's responses as well. We can also go in and select create a spreadsheet. We'll create a new spreadsheet. And now we have our answers here in a spreadsheet. And for that question that we needed to manually grade, so this one here, what is the tallest mountain in the world, which was a short answer question, we can go in and we can change our point values. We might say that now Mason has 30 out of 30 points, and Morrison has 10 out of 30 points. Now that can be a bit labor intensive if you have a lot of responses and a lot of questions. So we can also use an add-on to grade this automatically, including our sh some of our short answer questions. And we'll use the add-on called Fluberoo. And we'll say enable it in this sheet. And it's now enabled. Let's grade the assignment. And we're going to ignore the score question. So 
I skip grading there, student name will identify the student. Okay. Student email will again identify the student. And then we can give a point value here for each of these questions. What is the name of this mountain? Again, we're going to change that to normal grading and give it 10 points. And now we'll continue. And from here, we'll choose one set of answers to be the answer key. For a practical application, you'll want to take the quiz yourself so that you can be the answer key that appears in the spreadsheet. In this case, we'll use Mason's answers as the answer key. And you can see we now have a new sheet that includes the grades. Whereas the tallest mountain in the world is the only question that Morrison answered correctly. Now, we can give Morrison his scores by going back into the add-on, selecting Fluvaru, and then selecting Share Grades. And we can share with the student by email, or we can select the student name. And we can say share grades through email, share grades through Google Drive, or share grades through email and drive. We can then include an answer key for our students. And I might put a little message, please see me during office hours if you have questions about your grade. And now Morrison will receive an email and he'll receive a file in his Google Drive that has his answers. Now some of you may have been wondering about this question, where is the tallest mountain in the world? It does have more than one correct answer. So what if someone had written in Nepal, which is also a correct response? Well, we can change the answer key here. Let me say China, use the word for the sign for percentage symbol, the word or, and then the word Nepal. And so if Morrison had answered Nepal instead of China, now he'll get full credit. And we'll go back to our grade sheet here. We can go to the add-ons. And in Fluberu, we can say regrade the assignment. And again, we'll skip grading on that score column. And we'll leave our point values the same. We use Mason as the answer key. And now we have his grades again, but in this case, he had responded with Nepal instead of China, and he still got 10 points for that question. Now, one last thing we can do here in Fluberu, if your students don't have email addresses or you don't want to share grades electronically, you can go to the add-on in Fluberu, and under the advanced menu, you can select the option to print grades. You can include the answer key. And this will create a Google document for you that has every student's grade, their answers, and the answer key. So we'll take a look at that. And we can see there it is. Morrison has his own page with his answers, the correct answers, and his point value. Every student will have his or her grades on an individual page throughout the document so that you can easily print them off and pass them back to your students. So that's a short overview of how to get started using 
Google Forms to create and deliver quizzes. For more tips and tricks like this, please check out pretechforteachers.com.